Orca is the most popular free MSI editor available to achieve this since it can help to validate and debug errors. Advanced Installer allows you to edit MSI files without making any changes in the background. We will show you how you can use Advanced Installer to edit the MSI files as an alternative or complement to the Orca tool. Let's see how we can edit the three most common MSI package edit operations using the Orca. The first one is to modify some registry keys. The second one is to add some files. And the last one, we will have a look on how to change property values. Let's download Orca and get started. You can only install it as a component of Microsoft Windows SDK. To download and install Orca, follow these steps. First, we need to go on this page, which will be linked in the description, and download the installer for the Microsoft Windows SDK. Once this is downloaded, let's open it and go through the basic wizard. Now, as you can see, you can install or download the software development toolkit. For, in order to make it a little bit easier, I'm going only to download it. Click Next and only select the MSI tools. And as you can see, you already have a location where this is downloaded. So let's go. Let's go then to our downloads folder, Windows Kits, then Windows SDK, installers. And as you can see, you have your Orca X86 right here. Now that we have it downloaded, we can double click and install it. So now that we have Orca installed, let's open again the sample MSI. So right click, open with Windows Installer 3.0 Table Editor, which is Orca. And this will load our MSI database package into the interface. Now, before we start making any changes, we need to be aware that directly editing vendor MSI packages is not recommended. As a best practice, we suggest using a transform file to save and apply any modifications you make to the MSI when the installation is triggered. Now, to do that with Orca, all we need to do is click on Transform and New Transform. And let's start with the most easy one. Now, how to change a property value with Orca? Let's go to the properties table, order them by their name, and let's see what we can change here. So, for example, let's say I want to change the I want to change the manufacturer. Right now, it's Cafe, but we can put it as test. And that's pretty much it. This is how you change a property with Orca. Next, let's say we want to add a registry key. Let's presume that that registry key disables the auto update function of our application. And let's assume that the registry key is called check for update and the value is false. This is just an example. Now it should be present under the local machine hive under some general paths. So let's go to the registry page. Okay. And now click inside and click on add row. Now each of these rows uh, has a corresponding value that we need to fill in, right? So the registry is the name of the registry I previously mentioned. So let's say that it's called check for update. Okay. The root corresponding to the local machine hive is minus one. Good. The key, let's say the key is available somewhere in software, uh, manufacturer, uh, product name. And let's say we have some settings here. Okay. Now, again, the name of the key, which will be populated, which is check, which is check or update. The value that we previously mentioned is false. And we will need a component. Let's say for now we will put it on the component that we already see on the other keys, which is 
product information. Good. Once we have everything filled in, just click OK. And as you can see, it's highlighted that it's added here. This is the modification. And this is how you add the registry key. Now, let's say we want to add the file with Orca. Uh, let's just create a simple uh, settings dot cfg right okay cool now we have our settings file uh, i can also start typing something in it but okay do this we will need to edit the following tables which is component feature components files and media and if the table is already present msi file hash now the component table if we go into the component table we see that we already have three components. The first one is app dir, the second one is product information where we already placed the registry key and the other one is hello world.exe because we already have a file called hello world.exe and the component is separate for it. Good. So it would be nice to create a different component for this. So let's add a new row and let's say the unique key of this should be config file the component id now this is where technically you should generate uh, a guid i will put a link in the description for a guid generator and if we go here we can go on guidgenerator.com so you don't need to um, manually uh, do it each and every time okay so let's say we will use this one okay next under directory we will put app there app there as this is our installation directory attributes zero because okay no condition no keypad although Mm, we could put the, the keypad to the settings.cfg but we'll leave it like this okay and now we created the component next let's create the feature components so go to the feature components and as you can see we have one main feature we need to declare that in this feature we have another component so what we need to do is add a new row so on the main feature that is going to be installed we are going to place our component which we previously called config file. Config file. Good. We need to go to the file table to the file table. And it's time to associate the file to the recently created component. Now let's add a new row and let's say like this. Now the file, this is the string, let's call it. settings.cfg the component uh, which we previously created is called config file the file name we will leave it as settings.cfg let's right click on the file and get some properties which is 11 bytes okay good uh, no version no language let's paste the attribute so let's leave it 8192 which is for uncompressed file and sequence. Now, technically it should have uh, the value of the current biggest sequence number in the table plus one. So for example, if we have here sequence number three or four or five, you should have here six. But since we have the sequence number one, because we only have one file here, the sequence should be two. I have our new file. Now let's add this the media table so let's go to the media and add a new row now 
we need to increase the disk ID, right? Because we have one and the disk ID will be two. The last sequence, uh, just like in the previous, we need to do it like in the previous step, right? So if the last sequence was one, now it's two. Now that everything is done, let's go to transform and generate our transform file. And let's call it my transform file and save it on the desktop. Yay, and now we have our transformation file. So when you want to install your MSI, you will have the modify registry key, the additional file which is uncompressed, and you will have the property which we have changed. So we've seen how we can do it with Orca. Let's see how you can do this quick edits from advanced installer user interface, which is extremely easy and intuitive. So similar to Orca, to edit your MSI package, just right click it and select open with advanced installer. Once the MSI database has loaded in advanced installer, you will notice a left menu pane where you find all the options you need to directly edit your MSI. The changes you perform in the graphical user interface will be automatically reflected in all the related tables from the MSI, which will save you a lot of time from manually editing each and every MSI table and decrease the chance of human error. Now, to change a property with Advanced Installer on the left pane, let's navigate to the properties. And for example, uh, we can put, uh, I totally forgot what we changed last time, but let's say uh, I want to add a new property, which is called my property with my value and I click OK. Right, so this is how easy it is to add or modify any existing properties. To add the registry key to your MSI, we need to navigate to the registry tab the left pane menu now uh, let's go on the local machine manufacturer product name and let's add a new value and if i remember correctly it was stop updates for example and we will leave it as false click ok that's pretty much it and if you want to add a file into your msi package when you directly modify an MSI with Advanced Installer, this will update the MSI during the build operation following best practices and rules such as short names in the file table, separating components for each EXE, DLL or OCX file, upsetting keypads for each component. And when you add any files into the MSI by using a transform file and saving it, a cabinet file will be created alongside the MSD. This is not an Advanced Installer custom implementation, but the default behavior of the MSI database. So, for example, right now I am modifying the MSI directly. And if I go and put, for example, this settings.cfg file here and I save the MSI and build it, this will be saved directly into the MSI. Right, so you can save and now as you can see we have our separate cap file now you know two ways to edit your msi packages both orca and advanced installer are perfectly capable of editing an msi however as you can see editing your msi directly through the advanced installer graphical user interface saves time and prevents you from having to completely repackage your msi which is especially important when making quick edits to your msi package we hope you try this method and let us know what you think.